The Ukrainian capital Kiev, with its historic squares and shopping districts, is no stranger to tourism. But this busload of American tourists is traveling about 80 miles north of the city to a more unusual destination. Welcome to Chernobyl, the infamous nuclear power plant. Here, on April 26, 1986, nuclear reactor number 4 exploded. The blast, equal to about 100 of the bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, released a plume of radiation that reached as far as Western Europe. So it may seem surprising that the 19-mile exclusion zone surrounding the plant is beginning to emerge as a popular tourist destination. But for Chernobyl researcher Myron Stachiu, these expeditions serve a purpose. There's a great deal of folklore uh, and misperception about Chernobyl and about life in the zone, what's actually going on there, how serious is uh, even walking through the zone. One of those misperceptions is that radiation levels in the zone are still dangerously high. The accumulation of the whole day's worth of radiation in the zone was probably no more than a dental x-ray. Indeed, the participants on this tour are warned that their biggest fear should not be getting cancer, but rather falling into a neglected well. They step lightly as they walk through the deserted cities and work sites surrounding the Chernobyl plant, all of which were forcibly evacuated after the explosion. Perhaps the eeriest stop on the tour is the city of Pripyat, a Soviet town that was built for nuclear plant workers and their families. Here stands a rusty Ferris wheel. It's a reminder that the once thriving Pripyat is now nothing more than a ghost town. Still, the exclusion zone is not entirely deserted. About 500 people continued to live in the villages. This 78-year-old woman, for example, moved back into her house about a year after the disaster. It was a home probably built by her parents, uh, her relatives are buried in the cemetery in that village. Uh, if she goes somewhere else, she has nothing. But Stahu is quick to point out that long-term residents like her are playing a risky game. It's dangerous to the people who spend lots of time there and who actually live there. And as a result, the majority, let's say up to 60% of the population of irradiated territories now is just pensioners, many young people who have children have left the region. A more pressing danger is the threat of forest fires. The exclusion zone's trees and soil are still contaminated with radiation. Forest rangers have been successful in maintaining the fire so far, but if another fire should break out, it would send another nuclear cloud into the air. 22 years ago, steady winds blew most of the deadly radiation away from Kiev and its millions of inhabitants. Next time, the city might not be so lucky.